do all four of your properties. So we're going to do a bunch of seeds that are going to revolve around a theme. Okay. And for that, we need a big theme, love, hope, war, travel. <laughs> Thank you for meeting me in this bar. I have little choice in the matter. You could have said no. I could have. You did once. Yeah, and then look what happened. Lost nearly half my damn battalion. Your battalion was a battalion of men without heart. Yeah, many of them are dead now. Thanks for rubbing it in. My men did not relish destroying your battalion. They, they seemed to take great pleasure in it. On the outside, they yelled, they chanted, they prayed it. Oh, but they're deep thinkers. They cut them up inside. Inside, yes. Look, all I have to say is this is a damn informal way of conducting truce negotiations. I can't believe they're playing Kenny G in here. Would you have preferred we send telegrams? Sure. Or met at a, a book depository or a, or a, a train station. The fries are mine, please. Sorry, I'm just getting a little something to you on. Did you want? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll have um, uh, the nacho chili cheese poppers. Good choice, good choice. I often have that. Well, then I'll uh, take that back. I'll have um, the mozzarella sticks. You can put it on my tab, it'll be fine. I can pay for it myself. I've got a credit card. Please allow me. Sure. So there's been a little blood here and there on both a sides. A little blood? 12,000 men died in the field. I didn't realize you lost that many. I said it was half my battalion. I wasn't lowballing you. Thanks. You're looking good, by the way. The battlefield agrees with you. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I'm just a, a bloodthirsty warrior at home among the mud and death. You know these French fries with ketchup on them kind of look like anyway. I can't, I can't believe you. I can't believe your casual approach to the entire principles of war. I can't believe that you're a general and that you have defeated me on every battle that we have ever encountered each other. I can't believe any of these things. Is there no justice in this world? Not really. Do you want to catch up? supposed to play one now, too. Oh, right. I forgot. Miss Beauregard, mm -hmm. you invited me to tea for some very specific reason. Didn't you, Miss Beauregard? Well, can a, can a lady just enjoy a, a fine game of gin rummy with a gentleman caller on a lazy Sunday afternoon? Miss Beauregard, I made a special trip down here from Raleigh just to see you. And I appreciate that, Professor Molyneux. You mean Julius? I mean, it must be an awful hard song. Thank you, Miss Betsy. Professor Molyneux, you don't thank servants, you silly man. And she remembers that I want two fingers of scotch, I think. Well, you should feel glad that I don't have quite so many gentlemen callers that you can't keep their drink on this trip. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten all the commotion. So many gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen callers. Well, that's what I'm saying, is that I don't have so many. You don't have Are you any. Are you jealous, Professor You Moore? are 28 years old. You are over the hill. You're lucky that I came to you. Auntie Claire! Here. How dare you speak that to my face? Estates are almost bankrupt. You need me. You need this. You are a cat and a bounder, and I have half a mind to kick you out of my estate. It's soon to become mine. Well, we'll see about that. Maybe we could have an equal share. 
If you marry me, just like your daddy planned for you, you can be my wife. Oh, and I can't I, be your wife. I have, I have not been proposed to, and I have not accepted. Miss Beauregard, would you marry me? And you keep playing the gin running without me. That's kind of the way this whole conversation is going. You're a little bit behind, Miss Beauregard. You're over the hill. Your estate is nearly bankrupt. I am a lady, a landed proprietor lady. And I will not take your, your mouth and off in my face. Leave one, leave it once, Professor Mario. I am overcome with ladylike emotion. Miss Beauregard, you are oh. right. I have forgotten myself. I am sorry. You have forgotten yourself. Dare you touch my shoulder? Betsy! Betsy! It. Professor Molyneux has made an improper event, and I am all flustered. Professor, you're going to have to leave now. Betsy, you're a servant. You're not allowed to talk to Professor Sandler. I've been ordered. You're kind of caught in the middle, aren't you, Betsy? Escort him to the edge of the state and kick him from the premises. Well, when a lady wants me to leave, I know I need to leave, but I'll be back next Sunday. Well, you better bring your ring and you better get on your knees. <laughs> yes, Miss Beauregard. Goodbye, I will. Professor Molyneux. Goodbye. Betsy, I can show myself out. Betsy, don't leave just yet. Oh, Betsy, why are men so complicated? Because you've got a delicate demeanor. Betsy, you're always so kind. You have a heart as big as gold. And thank lots of it. Thank you for the compliment that you made in such a delightful, clumsy way. He didn't even finish his mint julep. He'll be back. I know we will. Oh, will he? Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder how long I can put him off. I think it's a good thing that you do the thing you're doing, man. Thank you, Betsy. Is it what would prayer prayer the dinner? Yes, please. We all love you, man. Share method. You don't approve? My approval is something I don't easily give. Well, Colonel, you I'm trying to do the best I can. I it's my first time interrogating anybody. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, you just took it. Aren't I supposed to tell you to sit down? It's your interrogation. Well, that's what I mean. Sit down. I'm sitting on it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um. Do you know, not every bulb on the tree is bright. Oh, my God. God. Listen, that's I, let me get my code book. I'm sure that's in my code book. <laughs> Not every tree on the bulb is bright. What? <laughs> like you've got a knife and you slice it through butter and it sounds like a rock that's hitting it. It's not as sharp as you think it is. Oh, Jesus. Please, <laughs> hey, would that be on? <laughs> okay, so that means your troops are moving up light like, under the cover of dark, right? Oh, shit. Now you're gonna do that. Those like sign language secret things. <laughs> Listen, I haven't even asked you a question. You're just giving me all this information. And I don't even know what it means. You need to be a big thinker if you're going to be an interrogator. You need to see big movies and read big books. Colonel, is that how you did it? It is how I did it. Do you watch movies? Lots of movies. Did you see Gladiator? Gladiator was one of my favorite. And Close Encounters was another favorite. I like Close Encounters. There's no wars in Close Encounters. I saw Close Encounters. It was really cool. Well, it doesn't have to be about a war to give you an idea you can use in a war. Oh my god, that's brilliant. Oh. Humphrey, if that is indeed your name, Humphrey. Um, yeah, I, 
Sergeant Humphrey. I, I was promoted just so I could do interrogations on colonels. <laughs> Usually you're not supposed to give the person you're interrogating your information <laughs> in case things get reversed. <laughs> Have you done this before? One or five hundred times. You've been caught before? That's why you're so hard to interrogate. You've got experience being interrogated. You know, sometimes you got to take a piss at the wrong time. Troops misinterpret it and you lose a battle. I don't know what to do with that. Is that code, or is that like something your grandma told you? Oh, she used to tell me a lot of things. Oh, no. <gasps> she Not grandma me. aphorisms. <gasps> you can't take all of your clothes off without using your buttons. Wow. There are only two fingers that matter. This one, and this one. Oh, a cherry doesn't fall from the tree in the summertime. I'll always remember you, Graham. I saw a pig one. My grandma aphorism's book is like out of date. <laughs> Let me help you. Let me help you. A cherry doesn't bounce off a baby's bottom. A cherry is that under C or B for baby? <laughs> I would guess B. What? There are only two fingers that matter. <laughs> Boy Scout on honor. I didn't do all the Boy Scouts though. Why don't you just tell it to me directly? Like, what I want to know is like, are they going to attack or not attack? And I don't know about cherries and baby okay, bottoms. Get the other cheer up. Get the other cheer up. <laughs> oh, come on, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Okay, so let's say these are your troops. Okay? Let's say these are my troops, which actually aren't mine because I've been demoted since I've got caught. You know this is really You're not a colonel anymore? Every time I get captured, I served as a five star general five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I tell you. And and then you keep ding to and you have less men, and then you forget where yours are, and you get... get back, I'm probably going to be a private. Well, I don't interrogate privates. I'm a sergeant. Then you have to let me go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was great meeting you. Okay. You let him go? Yeah. What? what? Well, he wasn't a colonel anymore. We had him at his mercy. Oh. He just... It. Oh, general... What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? What do I mean? We I tried, I, and he, he uh, tried all the tricks, and I had all the books, and I just. And why are there two chairs here? And an interrogation only takes place with one chair. I mean, even the rankest idiot knows he that. He invited me to sit down. He invited you. Yeah, it was really he nice. He was invited. That was you. the nicest man I've ever interrogated. Interesting resume. Thank you. Interesting, isn't it? It led to like four-year degree. Yes. Uh, English, English. Yes. English. So I see you publish some stuff. Lots of things. I am very well published. Yes. Well, you know, here at uh, Waddington Publishing, we have a rule. You are number one published. You crush the competition. That's our rule. We need to crush the competition. Yes. You feel like a crusher? I am very well crusher. Suppose you were the lord of an estate. Yes. And there were peasants and they were revolting. You cut off their head. And then what would you do with them? You eat their entrails. You hang their body in public for others to see. You find family, kill family. Ah! You feed family to dog, shoot dog, hang dog's court on wall. Here, sir. Here's a report on his Facebook page. You can't believe what's in his photo gallery. If dog is family, you find them, you kill them also. Yes. 
You're a Davy Jones fan? He's the best of monkeys. All other monkeys, tourists, pick me up there. Peter Tork, Peter Tork is less than human. Michael Nesmith, I will hang him from the highest tree. Other Michael, I don't care about him so much. You're part of the Britney fan stand, fan club? Oh, Britney, what she is like an angel in voice and wings. When she sings, it's like tearing at heart, like a raven plucking eyeball from socket. Britney, Britney is the demigod, yes. You're a Boy Scout. Yes. Is no lie. Huh. You know, I, I'm seeing parts of you that say cold-blooded killer that can crush the other publishing companies. Yes. I'm seeing parts of you that are like 70s, 80s, pop rockish, 90s kind of love stuff. Yes, I am, how you say, I am multitask. <laughs> yes. So we need an expansion of the sales force. Yes, we must put our forces into the territory of other Polish. We must crush them, and their women will lament, and their tears will flow like blood down the cheeks. And also, they will kill themselves. Yeah. That was beautiful. You're hired. Thank you. It's good. You will live now. Yeah. <laughs> meeting me here. I know it's a little awkward. It is. It's kind of dark out. Yeah. And uh, it probably took you a few phone booths to find this one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they're not I mean, there's hardly any phone booths with doors on them anymore. I know. I know. I had to fight for this one, believe me. It's like a corner <laughs> office <laughs> these days, anyway. So, the instructions are like... Excuse Go me. away! It's engaged! Yeah, we're busy. <laughs> I'm expecting a phone call. Uh, find another booth. There aren't any other ones. There There's other ones. Like they don't have doors. There's other ones. Tell him to go away. Go away. We're conducting important business. <laughs> go oh. away. Holy shit, George. You just shot a man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. Okay, I thought my business practices were a little disreputable. I'm never, dead. Wait a minute. I've never practiced but this. Is, did someone. Well, I didn't practice. I did. He's dead. Well, he's, he's, I can hear him calling. It's like he's not quite he's dead. He's bleeding to death. I shot him in the artery. Oh, good Christ, George. But why do you know about arteries? I see bright lights. I'm an assassin. You didn't. I thought that's I why you wanted know. to meet I me thought... here. Okay. You don't have someone to hit? Things just got a little awkward. You aren't supposed to know that, then. But no, I, 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 um, I uh, have many methods. They don't all hurt. Okay. Um, but uh, I, no, I have a job for you. Oh, oh that's different. Then. Okay, good. That's yeah. Got it. Because yeah, you know, if I didn't yeah. have a job, yeah, then it'd be like, oh, I know. If I thought you had met a different kind of contract, who would that be? Yeah. Okay. All right. It was nice. I got you text. I found the phone booth and everything. You and did. You yeah. did. And oh. you saw how efficient I am. Yeah, that was the excellent shot. Um, yes. I right did. in the artery. Take your word for that. Thank you. Good spot for the chairs. I like the chairs there. It's a good spot for them. Well, Bruce, I think if we put the chairs here, we're going to have to move the lights. You want to move the lights, Neil? The lights well, are in the wrong this, place. If if we have the star sitting here with all that makeup on and stuff like that, if the lights are where they are, there's going to be. You can just say it. it's a cagney. It's okay to say cagney. It's yeah. All right. Well, I just Mr. Cagney doesn't like to be referred to by name. I. I... <laughs> okay. He's not here, Neil. Listen, if you fucking refer to me by name, I swear to God, I'll punch you right in the fucking mouth. I'm... Well, I met him like back there at 
you were the stars on the door, and I said, oh, Mr. Cagney, and he was just like, really? You went to the star door? <laughs> the, the door? You're not supposed to go to the star door! Well, he was really upset! Oh, Neil, 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 Neil. Well, that's why I was just saying, calling him the star. I was thinking he's the star. I went the star door, the star. We're not stars, Neil. We're placers, organizers, light movers. That's what we do. We do it well. Yeah, but he's a star. Was, yeah, he's a star. What are we? We're dirt. <laughs> dirt, Neil. We're dirt. We're dirt. I mean, you're getting what? Dollar twenty-five an hour. Dollar twenty. You know, when I came here, I thought I was going to be a star. He makes he makes like a hundred dollars a week. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Stars, they make a lot of money. All right, I'm ready for it. Oh. I'm ready. Uh, Mr. Cagney, this is your seat. Good. All right. Good. Good. Glad to be here. Glad to be so, here. So, here. Just the light. So I didn't mean to look beautiful. No, no, you don't look beautiful, sir. What? What? Well, you what? look tough. Tough, 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 tough. What? I need to look beautiful. And I will kill a bitch if that does not occur. You do want to look beautiful. Can I have an autograph? Fuck! <sighs> we were kind of wondering if you could. We have an act. We'll see our uh, act. One of these. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what I want to see? Couple of one of these. Uh-huh. Look it. Watch. Just, it's like, hey, but I'm going to have to knock you down. Are you no! trying to get into my shit? Oh, shit. Uh, no, sir. You trying to muscle in on my territory? I think the thing Who the fuck is up for all of us? Who the fuck do I think I am? Who the fuck is... He said he wanted to be just like you when he was copying your moves. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm that close to death. Because my star was that close to Clips. Yeah, I, I you're the bright this. sick. Darn the heavens. Oh, yeah, bright star. God, I don't know how to work stars. Who told you? Miss Madeline. Wow. You don't talk to Miss Madeline? Wow. Actually, Miss Madeline's grocery delivery guy who happens to be my sister's brother in law. Gino! Yeah. Gino! Oh, I'll give my trailer. He's a great. Yeah. We were the great. presence of a great. <sighs> he liked the rap, I could tell. Yeah. He was, wow. You were good. Uh, you were good. <laughs> we're just together. together. We got a future. <coughs> did you hear that gunshot? I did. It came from the star door. All right, guys, I'm ready to, to conduct the interview. Um, is Mr. Cagney here? Uh... Why don't you go uh, knock his door real quiet like that? We, we like just it? got... Sir, we... we uh, uh, I'll go check! We're live, we're live soon. We're live in like 30 seconds. So if you can grab out here, I can conduct the interview. Be great. Live in 30 seconds! Yeah. You're going to ask us if we could go on for him for a little while because he's got a drinking problem. What? He's drunk. You're live in like 10 seconds and you bring me this He's email? drunk. He's drunk and he said we could fill in for a little while. And we're live in five. Ooh. Four. Hello, America. Welcome to the Sydney debut talk show. <laughs> Well, you know, I have a little surprise tonight. We were going to have Mr. Jim Cagney, a uh, famed, wonderful actor in so many movies, so many times, so many good times that we share with these movies together. And instead, we have the wonderful opportunity to talk with the latest sensation, the acting duo of uh, Rod and Roger. Roger. I'll let them introduce themselves. Rod and Roger. Yeah, yeah, I'm Rod. I'm Roger. Rod and Roger, it's so nice to We go to R&R. &R. I just have to say, uh, 
I, I don't want to ask too much, but I was wondering if you could just uh, do a little favor for us to do and to reenact uh, the crowning moment of your latest release. <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, you know, uh, uh, this is a, a little thing we've been working on uh, called Death Happens to Mom's Barber. Uh, I'm going to be the barber. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be Mom. Okay. Yeah. And, and. Harry, what happened to you? My God, I saw awful things. There were hairs and there were clippers that were rusty. And I had to shave every hair off a young boy. Oh, Harry, I'm so glad for you. Was that good? Was that good? Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Well, then it's now that we conduct the interview proper. And come on, and stand, because that's how I do. Well, Rod and Roger, if you'd like to talk about your early upbringing and then where you started and how you got your big break. We started on the south side of New York. Oh, in the really yeah, down by the warehouse the district where there's rats and, and where you just get up in the morning and you have to like kick the rats out of your shoes and go out on the street and sell newspapers. Yeah, we sold newspapers. That's how we learned to get into character. Oh, great. That's excellent. We imitated the headline character. Mr. Cagney was in the headline so many times. So we were always out there like, hey, uh, gangster, kill today, I do it myself, kind of thing. Oh, well, Here's your paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, growing up in such extreme privations, I was just wondering, what really inspired you? What artists, what actors, what famous people inspired you to become the people you are today? Well, the guy from the Buck Rogers trailer series. Oh, yes. Oh, man. What a uh, superb, superlative artist. Yeah, he, he's amazing. James Cagney and, and Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. He's, he's new now, but he's, he's getting better he's known. Star, Climbing the ladders. Uh, speaking of climbing ladders, I was wondering what the next step for Rod and Roger was going to be, where you were going to go, what you were going to do, what challenge you were going to aspire to. Well, we were, we were going to find a feature-length producer, a man with money and connections that could help propel us in this studio. Well, for what particular direction were you seeking to advance your oeuvre? Big blockbusters that make money. Yeah, with dancing girls. That's a nice engineering Cute dance. girls, Thank always you, cute Roger. girls where you go in with We're going to go to a little commercial break, and when we come back, we'll have the dancing for the members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So just who is it that I'm supposed to knock off? Uh, Jim. You came to tell me that we're in the same room with the mark? That would make it easier. What are you going to do with you standing there watching? Oh, um, so I just don't know how these will work. But, but I mean, God, this hey, is hey, in the hey, office. Hey, hey, hey. Are, are you, you guys the assassins? Yes. I'm the assassin. We're both the assassins. You, you don't know how to assassin. You were the mailroom guy. Yes. I was undercover. Brilliant. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. He's pretty sharp. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty sharp. Well, thank you, so, sir. I appreciate it. So why am I supposed to be killing the director of communications? He is an evil man, and he stands in my path to glory. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you fire everyone in accounting, please? They're getting on my nerves. Oh my God, he's deadly. He's deadly. You want me to kill someone? He's like I. He's a kindred spirit. Would you like God? Would you like a drink? Oh yeah, that's. Oh, you did that, which is such sincerity. That's different from this milk toast over here I've been talking to. I mean, he just doesn't know how to do anything. Is Mountain Dew okay? Oh, yeah. Well, those little ones. My favorite is Mountain Dew. I always drink Mountain Dew. Thanks. So, uh, some Cheetos? Do anyone want some Cheetos? I'll have some Cheetos. So, uh, just help yourself with the Cheetos. 
Thanks, thanks, thanks. Wow, that's the biggest ball of Cheetos I've ever seen. Are you addicts around here? As a matter of fact, I, I am a little bit of a Cheeto addict. It's what propelled me to get where I am today. I Cheetos? want to be able to buy more Cheetos than anyone else. Actually, I eat Twinkies. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Catch. One of my business associates likes Twinkies. Likes Twinkies, however you say it. Yeah. Ooh, hey, we're doing the charade thing. I'm thinking that means go ahead, do it, blow me away. <laughs> <laughs> was that good? Was that, was that, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. This, Mr. Gregory. Please. I saw you fire the whole accounting department. You just did so cold blooded. It's like I could learn things from you. You got a resume? Oh, sure. It's it's on my phone. Um, a conference? Gonna call you a mini conference? Yeah. Huh? Wow. Oh yeah. And I did extra training in Africa, sniper. Wow. After Yale. Well, he reads that. that. Why don't we have a mini conference over here in the cupboard? I'm going over in the cupboard. Come on. No problem. Come on. It's tight in here. Hey, there's a ham sandwich on the top shelf if you get a little bit more hungry there. So, when are we doing it? I was saying I like the guy. I feel like you're kind of going over on his side. I, I kind of wonder whether I'm yeah, killing yeah, the right can't, person. Yeah, he can't talk to you right now. He's in the middle of an assignment. Hey, you got, you got an incoming so, call. Well, call? You got a call. Oh, OK. I think it's your mom. Mom? Oh, hi. How's things? How OK. Sunday, 2 o'clock? Fine. Yeah, marshmallows. That, that's good. I love marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm not doing anything on Sunday. Okay, bye. Hey. Uh, oh, can I bring a friend? <laughs> okay. Yeah, his name's Mr. Gregory. What's your first name? William. William. Bill. Bill Gregory. Okay, yeah, he's a really good buddy. Okay, bye. Hey, uh, can you take that stack of mail back down to the mail room? Yeah. Hey, you know. We live out on uh, Long Island. Oh, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'll come by and uh, pick you up in the morning about uh, one, uh, 11.30. Oh, that, that'd be really good. <laughs> oh, that will become friends first. Uh, I love your style. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Freedom for fish, freedom for fish, freedom for fish. Hi. You're one of those fish killers, aren't you? Josh, did it put him on a little hook? Josh, we don't have to go through this every week, okay? Did it tease him? Here's a worm, take a bite. Just something, it helps me relax. They're just fish. Just fish? Yes, just fish. You know what Jesus said? No. Jesus said, I don't, I, you don't, you're, the man, you don't know you're making you're this shit up. I, I read the Bible once. Look, no, I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just get in peace with my, Josh. You know, they're in school right now. They're Josh. all swimming together in a school. Maybe you're going to get the truants or something. The ones that... <laughs> Mark! <laughs> Whoa. Josh, 
but you don't have to prove a point about this. It's just a fish. And now it, we... You're not even a vegetarian, Josh. No, I was in there. I heard the school bell. Josh. The oyster makes no sound on Wednesday. At least very little sound. I can't hear nothing. The oyster makes no sound on Wednesday. I didn't hear that. Oh! Excuse me, is that you, Boris? Of course it's me. Who you think is talking about oyster on Wednesday? I forgot. That's such a password. I, I didn't remember. Well, what do you forget? How do you forget password? I thought you were going to say something like, you know, it, it rains in the living room uh, no, only when the TV's on or something. We agree, we agree. We say specifically, you come to I, you come to this place in the park and you say the oyster will make no sound on Wednesday. Now you're talking about Oh! Oh! Getting in shape! Getting in shape! In the park! Yeah! In shape! Woo! Yeah! Oh sorry, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, get in shape. Good, good. I am just reading newspaper unsuspiciously. Ha! Huh. Cool. Is that, that's, uh, I don't know what language that is. I'm reading the Time magazine <laughs> unsuspiciously. Practice the Are you lying? Could you please go down by the lake and do that, sir? I'm getting in shape in the park. It's a free park. We're having a secret thing in here. Oh, jeez. They didn't mean that. <laughs> I can, I can go for a secret meeting. You're getting in shape. Go away. <laughs> okay. Catch you later. Fuck you guys. Sergey, I think you're blowing a cover. I'm sorry, Boris. Oh, sorry. Sorry is all well and good. But when I get expelled from this nation and come back to the commissariat in disgrace, then what, huh? Yeah, then I'll be with you. That would be a terrible thing. Terrible thing. So, here, I brought you Good briefcase. Good, good. Just what you said. Everything you said. I'm sorry. So again, it's still handcuffed to your head. I know. I I what? lost the key. But I'm lucky I have a new handcuff just for you. What's the so so you you Oh, you guys are holding hands there. Yes, we are a gay couple. Going yes, to get married. Get in shape, get in shape, get in shape. This is the most undercover I've been. I don't want to be a gay couple. You, bro, you, I, I, I thought it was a pretty good excuse. Yes, but what are you going to do this uh, briefcase? What am I going to do? What are you yes. going to do? What? Get the, do you have the key for the second handcuff that you will put on my head? I lost it. What do you mean you lost it? Why are you it putting on my head? head? What are you thinking? What are we thinking? Actually, I wanted to hold your hand. I am a gay couple. Sir, <laughs> okay. Boris, I've been meeting you here for 10 years. Sir, okay. why did you not tell me this earlier? Before we were heading up to the suitcase! All of important time! I thought you would run away, run away then I told you. No! Yes, you would run away. I have the same feeling. <gasps> but we cannot talk about first. We must get our hiding houses. The jogger guy will have a screwdriver. Yes, because when I jog, I know that the first tool that I pick to go and jog. Get in shape, get in shape, get in shape. Oh, Do you have a screwdriver? Excuse me, excuse me. Do you have a screwdriver? Mine might have a screwdriver. He has one in his hand. Look. And he's right hand. He's got a screwdriver. It's a Swiss Army knife with a screwdriver. So could you have a Could you have one? Can I borrow it? We just borrow. We give right back. Yes. Not Please. for any gross Please. reason. Can I get an invitation to the secret meeting? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the the oyster, oyster makes no sound on Wednesday. That's your invitation? It's password. It's the secret invitation. Oh, okay. Cool. Ow, I'll get oh, I'm definitely. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah! Oh, I just got a letter. Oh. Okay, this is much worse than it was before. Whoa, you guys are like... Uh, oh. No, no, I'm interrupting something. You can keep it. 
the under Swiss Army knight out of that. Uh, yes, but, but now one, I'm... That is looking at very much the positive side of stuff. How did you get both hands into that? How did I? You were the one with screwdriver. I should have done it to you guys. Why did I do it? I cannot stand, stand up. up. There is suitcase on my back. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, that is very funny. funny. <laughs> and as you see, they are all present and accounted for. <clears throat> But you should probably count them again just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four, five! One, two, three, four, five! 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 Thanks for the update. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Mr. Solomon, may I say, how oh, yeah. Just how uh, thankful we are for your great donation. You should be thankful. I'm giving you five. Yep. Big chests of money. You know why? Well, because you're a very generous man. And you uh, want the knowledge of Egyptian scarabs to be profounded. Well, yeah, that's the reason. That's the reason, yeah. It wasn't because I like Monopoly and I think a treasure chest. Whatever your reasons were, Mr. Solomon, we are very appreciative, and we do thank you for this. Go to money. jail for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Monopoly, you got it. Uh, you be the dog. I'm the race car. Sure. Yeah. Vroom vroom. Uh, race car. Yeah. Dog. Race car. Broadway. Yeah. Right. Park Place. Thank you, Vermont. Illinois! Ooh, Illinois! You're Illinois! You're Illinois! Mr. Solomon, I'd, I'd appreciate if you wouldn't degrade me. I am a curator. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, so, it's, it, it, Illinois is not that bad. Yeah, I heard good things about it once. Yeah, I yeah. heard a lot of nice people there. Yeah. Yeah. You're a curator from Illinois. You're an Illinois curator. Mr. Solomon, I'm not, I'm not actually from Illinois. That's a fantasy you made up in your description of the Mon Monopoly board. Eh? Um. Uh, Life's a game of Monopoly, curator guy. It's a very interesting philosophical viewpoint. Mr. You Solomon. make it around the board, you get... $200. BAM! How many chests do you have there? Five. BAM! How many times did I take it around the board? I couldn't tell you unless you knew how much money was in a chest. I'm thinking I made it around the board five times two is ten, and then I went backwards a few times. It's an interesting version of Monopoly, Mr. Zolomon. Yeah. You gotta pay the banker, that's what I did, I paid the banker. You were paying the banker, period. Oh, uh, yes, actually, well, uh, I don't like to talk about it much, but one time I, uh, yeah. well, I accidentally got a little overdrawn, so I paid a fee to the bank. You were overdrawn? It was just a big mix up. Oh. oh. I, I, I mean, no, it's just a. I don't, I don't need your pity, Mr. Solomon, thanks. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> overdrawn. Wow. I, I, I would submit that it's not actually disgusting. That you actually admit to people you were overdrawn? It's an honest mistake. An honest mistake. mistake? No man of integrity would make that kind of mistake. I am a man of integrity! Illinois! Illinois! I'm not from Illinois! I'm a traitor! Yeah! Broadway! I'm... I'm not thinking of the bloody revolution that will soon come. It's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of scarabs. Beautiful, cool... I think we're going to be good friends, Illinois. No, Mr. Solomon, I, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think we could ever be friends. Frederick, actually. Freddy. Curator guy. My name is Mr. Walpole. Mr. Walpole, Wallow. I'll call you Wallow. Wallow? My first name is Richard. You can call me Richard. Richie Rich? Or Richard. Which, uh, 
Okay, just give me R. Yes, Mr. Stallman. Okay, R. Freddy. Yes, Freddy. Poker good game for you, Freddy? I'm sorry, I'm Freddy, you're R. Um, I, I play poker. Yeah. Cigars, smoke a cigar here and there. I've never smoked a cigar. You never, you never smoked? Oh, R, R, R. You R. carry them in your pocket? Of course I do. I, I mean, it's a museum. I'd rather not. There's exhibits that are very valuable and thousands of years old. I think it would be inappropriate to smoke a cigar. Thousands of years? Yes. Wow. Have you no idea what you donated to this museum? None. Just money in boxes. Well, the money in boxes is going towards the purchase of several fine scarabs. From, scarabs. Yes, from the early scarabs. Do you mean to like be fighting against the, the union people or something like that? Not sure what connection you're making, Mr. Yeah. Solomon Freddy, but um, that's not what I was thinking of. So this stuff is thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. Well, some of it, yes. Um, that, uh, that stone with the hieroglyphs on, uh -huh. it, it dates to 1760 BC. It was discovered in uh, the Nile Basin in, as part of the. But you don't care about that. That's not just some kid tagging it in a weird way? Not an explanation that occurred to me, Fre Freddy. Well, maybe it was ancient tagging. Perhaps. Uh, we believe, however, that the person who carved it was actually doing so to honor the great pharaoh, Sahuta Kamenev. Yeah, no, it is. I will take it for later. Thank you. Very much. Can't play. It's... Ow! How? What? Why is it? It can't be lit. We can't. We can't. Well, it's like, smoke it if you got it, but no, it, I, it can damage the artifacts. Oh, damage, damage, they're old. Yes, they are old, they are ancient. They are from the beginning of human civilization. So, really? the beginning? Yes. Wow. My five boxes of money, money buys the beginning of ancient civilization, that's awesome. I stubbed it out. I told you about the... Mr. Sullivan, listen, there are certain that's things... That's a hundred dollar cigar. R. That's a hundred bucks. You can't take it with you. <clears throat> there doesn't really appear to be anything you can do about it. And that's true. I think it's over. I agree. So it doesn't bother you that you're let go? Oh, it bothers me. It's, you said there's nothing I can do about it. But you know there are rules about smoking in the museum. Mr. Gower, he, he forced it on me. Hmm. He forced it on you. He made you smoke He cigar. threatened to damage the artifacts. What? But you're a curator. You know how to prevent someone from I, damaging I, artifacts. The ordinary run of another person, yes, but this Mr. Solomon. Oh, person. it was Solomon? Yes. Oh, oh, he's a bozo. Yes. Didn't you know that? No! What do you want? Why didn't you tell me? Mr. Gower, you're supposed to tell me. I sent him down to see you. You're our top curator. He's our top donor. You're supposed He's to be a madman. Nice. He's insane. He has no concept of human history. He has no concept of civilized behavior. He has a concept of boxes of money. He brings boxes of I, money. I understand that, Mr. Gower. You have to have been there. He was... It's like a force of nature. He's you like have to control these donors. I tried to control How him. How can you be the curator? Controlling donors is as important as controlling scarabs. Scarabs are much easier to control. Really? But they're magical. You didn't know that? Oh. There were some special ones we had set down. They actually had a curse on them. Mr. Gower, I feel like 
<clears throat> for the future next period, you might want to engage in a little more communication about things like mad donors and curses. That's why you're being fired. It's the curse. Working out, getting in shape, working out, yeah! Oh yeah! Working out, getting I brought to you a Swiss Army knife. There's blood on it. I made you a cupcake. By way of things. I brought you an invitation to a party. It's our wedding party. Yes. <laughs> No! no! Congratulations! Please, please to respond by July 18th. <laughs> no. There you go. Attending. He's coming. Good. There'll be all three of us at that party. You guys are such a wonderful couple. Always. We owe it to you. Without you, we'd never have discussed our secret feelings. You know, I always knew this getting in shape would bring the world together. Yes. And what is that we tell him about oysters? The quiet oysters on Wednesday? I don't know. The, the oysters make no noise on Wednesday. Oh, That's true. He They're cannot remember the thing, he's silly Billy. The oysters sleep on Wednesday. Make no noise. Oh, okay. It's very important. Oysters sleep on Wednesday is a different message. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Duh. Oh. Have you not read code book? You silly Billy. He is silly Billy. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Hey, hey. Do you mind if I just for my buddy so I can tell my friends in the park? Oh, no, please, could be big. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Got it. No, see, oysters okay. keep on with me. Nuclear. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I see. Okay. okay. Nuclear, well, like, well, immunity. Well, and, and then when it's there, like, just, just making you quiet, then it's the other kind of thing. Yeah, because well, no, 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 the He's no, he's not his. No, not to worry. Eat your cupcake. It's nice. I make it very nice. Make with ginger. You like ginger. Um, uh, um. No. So, do you see him at the party? Yeah. Gotta run. Work it out. Bye bye. No, sir. Here we are at the park. I know. Where we first confessed love. First me. There we are. Now we work together, we can live together. Uh, thank you for coming out on a Saturday night. Once again, Awkward Face, David. I'm Ralph. I'm Alan. Here every Saturday, Fridays, Liquid Mind is here. Uh, check out the website for classes, Yelp, Friendline, all that good stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.